hello good morning students i welcome you back on the next lecture so in the last lecture we have seen about an automobile differential we have seen that how an automobile differential works and we have seen different topics and we have seen crash testing now there is one more important topic that is the braking system in automobile so you are all of you are familiar with this very important line that an object remains in state of rest or in motion until and unless acted upon by an external force so this is the newton first law so body will be keep on moving so you need a braking system in order to bring that body to an halt okay so that is why uh, this braking system is used and you will find braking system in all your automobiles even in your cycle also in your bikes in your car everywhere you find this uh, braking system so there are different types of braking system so in an automobile vehicle a braking system is an arrangement of various linkages and components brake drum or brake disc that are arranged in such a fashion that it converts the vehicle's kinetic energy into the heat energy which in turn stops or deaccelerates the vehicle the conversion of kinetic energy into heat energy is a function of frictional force generated by the frictional contact between brake shoes and moving drum okay so the, what is the need of braking to the first one is uh, to stop the moving vehicle and uh, to deaccelerate the moving vehicle and then uh, for stable parking of a vehicle for you know for preventing uh, from accidents to prevent the vehicle from any damage due to road conditions so now uh, the next topic is uh, classification of braking system so it's a big classification okay we can classify the braking system in so many different ways okay so we have discussed the evolution of the braking system from vintage cars to modern cars from vintage carriage to modern trucks has given us various different purpose braking systems which are classified on the basis of various needs and purpose okay so the first one is on the basis of power source so the power source which carries the pedal force applied by the driver on brake pedal to the final braking drum or brake disc in order to deaccelerate or stop the vehicle the braking systems are of six type okay so depending upon the power source so the first one is mechanical braking system hydraulic braking system pneumatic braking system vacuum braking system magnetic braking system and the last one is electric braking system so uh, you can classify the braking system on the basis of frictional braking contact so on the basis of the final friction contact made between the rotating brake components that is the brake drum or disc rotor and the brake shoe the braking system are of two types internal expanding brakes and external contracting brakes okay so uh you know drum brakes and disc brakes okay so these two are uh, widely used in your automobiles okay nowadays we are using disc brakes so on the basis of application so on the basis of method of applying brakes braking system are of two types foot or service brakes hand or parking brakes on the basis of brake force distribution single acting brakes and dual acting brakes so now we'll be looking into the uh, first classification that is the mechanical brakes so see the mechanical brakes are the oldest type of the brake okay you can call your cycle brake as a mechanical brake so in your cycles you use it and in your older vehicles uh, we have used this mechanical brake the direct mechanical power is you know going to the uh, brakes but uh, you know this system is not efficient you know that is why we have stopped uh, using this so in this type of braking system in which the brake force applied by the driver on the brake pedal is transferred to the final brake drum or disc rotor through the various mechanical linkages like cylindrical rod fulcrum springs etc in order to do ex deaccelerate or stop the vehicle mechanical brakes were used in various old automobiles but they are obsolete nowadays okay these are uh, these are obsolete nowadays so the next one is the hydraulic brakes so these are the you know somewhat uh, advanced type of brakes and uh, we are using it exten extensively nowadays you can find these hydraulic brakes in your bikes also okay most of the bikes and in your 
cars you will be are using this hydraulic brakes so it is the type of braking system in which the brake force applied by the driver or brake pedal is first converted into hydraulic pressure by master cylinder then this uh, hydraulic pressure from master cylinder is transferred to the final brake drum or disc rotor through brake lines instead of mechanical linkages brake fluid is used in hydraulic brakes for the transmission of brake pedal force in order to stop or deaccelerate the vehicle okay so this is the difference so almost all the bikes and cars on the road today are equipped with the hydraulic braking system due to its high effectiveness and high brake force generation capabilities so the thing is that using your hydraulic braking system you can multiply your braking effort in the mechanical braking system whatever force you are giving to the pedal is going to be transferred to your braking system okay but in hydraulic braking system you can multiply it so that is why you can break a heavy vehicle using the hydraulic braking system very easily so the next one is the air or pneumatic braking system okay so uh, in most of the heavy vehicles near buses we use this uh, pneumatic braking system so it is the type of braking system in which atmospheric air through compressors and valves is used to transmit the brake pedal force from the brake pedal to the final drum or the disc rotor air brakes are mainly used in heavy vehicles like buses and trucks because hydraulic brakes fail to transmit high brake force through get, through greater distance so this is the we can say a small disadvantage of uh, hydraulic braking system and also pneumatic brakes generates higher brake force than hydraulic brake which is the need of the heavy vehicle the chances of brake failure is less in case of pneumatic brakes as they are usually equipped with a reservoir air tank which comes in action when there is a brake failure due to leakage in brake lines high end cars these days are using air brake system due to its effectiveness and fail proof ability but still i have to look for an example for those cars who are using the pneumatic braking system if you know you can just uh, post in the Uh, comment section any car that is uh, you know high end car that is using a pneumatic braking system so then comes the vacuum brake so you know in your automobiles we don't use this braking uh, this vacuum braking system basically it finds application in your train and you have seen it also okay whenever we pull the chain you know this uh, vacuum braking takes place so it is the conventional type of braking system in which vacuum inside the brake lines causes brake pads to move which in turn finally stops or deaccelerates the vehicle okay so this is the main uh, principle vacuum brakes were used in old or conventional trains and uh, replaced with air brakes nowadays because of its less effectiveness and slow braking so the next one is the magnetic brakes So in this type of braking system the magnetic field generated by permanent magnets is used to cause the braking of the vehicle it works on the principle that when we pass a magnet through a copper tube eddy currents is generated and the magnetic field generated by this eddy current provide magnetic braking okay so these are non contact type this is the frictionless braking system and thus there is less or no wear and tear so this is the advanced technology in which no pressure is needed to cause braking the response to the braking in this is a quite uh, it's quite quick as uh, compared to other braking system so this is a non contact type of uh, braking system so it is uh, you know it is used in some of the cars some of the new cars so then you have electrical brakes okay so it is the type of braking used in electric vehicles in which braking is produced using the electric motors which is the main source of power in electric vehicles it is further divided into uh, two types not three types plugging brakes and the regenerative braking so the plugging brakes when the brake pedal is uh, pressed in the electric vehicle equipped with plugging brake the polarity of the motors changes which in turn reverses the direction of the motor and causes the braking so this is the uh, braking okay plugging brakes 
So using the motor itself, you are uh, you are breaking the vacuum. So then is the regenerative braking. It is a type of electric braking in which at the time of braking, the motor which is the main power source of the vehicle becomes the generator. That is when brakes are applied, the power supply to the motor cuts off due to which the mechanical energy from the wheels becomes the rotating force for the motor which in turn converts this mechanical energy into the electrical energy. So you can see this Tesla Model S is uh, provided with the most effective regenerative braking system. Okay, so on frictional contact basis, we can classify it into two different types and these are the most familiar also you might be knowing these two names okay and these are the two brakes that we use in your automobiles the first one is the drum brake okay it's a very simple construction it is the type of brake system in which a drum which is the housing of the brake shoe along with actuation mechanism is attached with the wheel hub in such a fashion that outer part of the drum rotate with the wheel and the inner part remain constant. So uh, when brakes are applied the actuation mechanism causes the brake shoe to expand due to which the outer frictional surface of the brake shoe makes frictional contact with the rotating drum part which in turn stops or deaccelerates the vehicle. So this is the small diagram okay that I have taken for you uh, taken for your understanding and uh, but you cannot draw this diagram uh, in your exam suppose if anyone asks you because it's a three dimensional diagram so i'll be posting in the group a two dimensional diagram much more easier to uh, draw in your notebook okay so uh, this is the thing that you can see the in between you know this is the brake shoe it is having a lining this lining is generally made up of abrasive materials Okay, and uh, this uh, you know drum brakes are nowadays uh, it's it's not used nowadays. Okay, but still in your older vehicles, in your cars and your uh, we can say two wheelers, especially scooters, you will find these uh, drum brakes. Okay, and but nowadays most of the cars are coming with disc brake, but older variants you know some of them may have drum brakes. So now we'll just move to the disc brakes. Okay, so these are the new type of brakes. And you, you can see these brakes in, uh, you know, bikes and some of the bicycles also, okay. Now they are coming with this disc brakes. So it is the type of braking system in which instead of a drum assembly, a disc rotor attachment to the hub of the wheel is uh, in such a fashion that it rotates with wheel. This disc rotor is clamped in between the caliper which is rigidly fixed with the knuckle or upright of the vehicle. This caliper used is the housing of the brake shoe along with the actuation mechanism. When the brakes are applied, the actuation mechanism contracts the attached brake shoes which in turn makes the frictional contact with the rotating disc rotor and causes the braking of the vehicle. So here you can see it is a diagram. So I will just uh, zoom it a little bit so that you can see it properly. So you can see that uh, you know this is the hub, this is the rotor and these are the brake pads, this is the piston when you apply this piston will come into contact with this rotor and then braking will take place. So I just a minute. So we have seen now the service brakes or the foot brakes okay this is one more classification actually I the heading is not there so you can just go back and you can check for it okay the service brake these are the types of brake in which the brakes are applied when the driver presses the brake pedal mounted inside the cockpit or at the foot space of the vehicle with its foot this pedal force applied on the driver is further multiplied and sent to the braking drum. So it means suppose if you are applying the brake using the foot then it is the service brake or the foot brakes okay or then the second one is the hand brake or the parking brakes. So uh, you know these uh, in most of the cars you will find your hand brake or we also call it parking brakes okay. 
so these are uh, you know not that much uh, we can say effective in stopping a vehicle it can only help in parking a vehicle suppose if you are driving car and if you use your parking brake so it, it's not that much effective and i will not recommend you to try it also so these are the types of brake also known as emergency brakes uh, as they are independent of the main service brake and hand brakes consist of hand operated brake lever which is connected to the brake drum or disc rotor through the metallic cases so generally these hand brakes are applied either to the front wheels or to the rear wheels and some of the cars you will find that out of those two rear wheels only in the one rear wheel it is applied okay when hand brake lever is pulled tension is created in the metallic rod which in turn actuate the braking drum or disc rotor mechanism and final braking occurs so hand brakes are usually used for stable parking of the vehicle either on flat road or slope that is why it is called parking brakes so uh, the next classification is on braking force distribution okay so single acting and dual acting so the single acting it is a type of braking in which uh, braking force is transferred to either a pair of wheels or to the single wheels through single actuation mechanism okay so this type of braking system is commonly used in bikes or light purpose vehicle and the dual acting brake uh, brakes it is the type of braking in which the brake braking force is transferred to all the wheels of the vehicle through dual actuation mechanism okay so this type of braking is used in your car so you can know you are you are using the one pedal and because of that all four wheels are uh, you know stopping the braking force is going so the next classification application so we have discussed all the classification now we'll just look into the application so the mechanical brakes are you know cars like ford model y and bikes like bajaj pulsar 180 so mechanical brakes nowadays we don't use it okay in your older cars you can find it so the hydraulic brakes the modern cars like maruti suzuki swift and bikes like ktm duke 390 okay so in bikes also you will find it in air brake most of your heavy vehicles buses you will find it and vacuum brakes is uh, used in your old trains magnetic brakes the magnetic brakes are uh, used in uh, bugatti veyron and various hypercars okay so it's a small assignment for you to look for the cars which are using magnetic brakes electric braking we have discussed this uh, it is used in tesla mod- model s and uh, okay these are regenerative types of braking also then drum brakes old maruti 800 and tata 407 and disc brakes all modern cars okay all modern cars are using disc brakes hand brakes uh, you will find all in all of your automobiles single acting uh, your bikes okay just like tvs apache and then dual acting your four wheeler okay so this is uh, some basic about uh, your braking system i hope you have understood it and uh, you are able to get a total view of how a braking system works in an automobile okay so question can be asked that what is a braking system and how we can classify it in different types okay so in, in this uh, classification two types are very important So the first one was uh, disc brake and uh, your drum brakes, okay? Because we are using it uh, mostly in your automobiles. So you can look into that, okay? You can write notes, okay? And then if you have any questions, you can write down on the comment section. Thank you.